All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how I have plugins on my Bash shell. What do I mean by that? I mean, when I'm using Bash interactively, I have a whole plugin system for my dot files where I have a bunch of different plugins that I've written to make my life easier, aliases, functions, things like that. So let me show you. I wrote a program called Bix and I'm gonna install it right now. It's on GitHub. So there's a script you run, you basically curl it and then pipe it to Bash. But in this example, I'm using process substitution. We're gonna run it with the init argument. So let's go ahead and run this. And what do we see? Well, we created a directory called Bix here and a test plugin was created. We pulled the source code, we pulled version 0.1.0, and then we have a nice getting started guide. So there's four things we have to do. We have to add this line, so we have to source Bix to our bash RC file. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's vim our bash RC, and we just have a really basic one here. So let's go throw that in there. All right, step two is to run exec bash to reload your current shell. So we'll run exec bash, and now we have reloaded our current shell, awesome. We can install plugins with Bix install and then a repo URL here, so like a GitHub repo or whatever, and we can use Bix list to install plugins. So let's run Bix list. Here are the plugins that are installed. We have a test plugin. So what does that mean? Well, let's go into dot Bix and let's see what we have. We have the Bix script itself and we have a plugins folder. So let's go into the plugins directory and we can see the test plugin directory is there. So what's inside that? There are two things. There's a help.txt and a test plugin.bash. So help.txt just prints this plugin does nothing. How do we access that? Well, we can do Bix help test plugin and it will actually pull it up in our pager for us. But let's look at what it actually does. So let's look at the bash file, test plugin.bash. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything. So let's add some stuff to it. Let's say, uh, I don't know, echo hello world. And then let's exec bash. This will restart our shell. And there we go. It prints hello world. So it'll basically go through and exec any dot bash files that exist in any plugins. That's how easy it is to make a plugin. You make a directory in there and you put dot bash files in there. So the plugin system that I use, it does it all over repositories. So let me show an example. Let's actually install one. So let's do bix install, and then we can give it a repo link. So we have a GitHub repository. This is still my own Bahamas 10 bash CD stack. So let's pull in CD stack. So there we go. Now it's installed. If we do a bix ls, there it is. Bash CD stack is there. So what does that mean? Let's exec bash. And now the CD stack plugin is running. So how do we know that? Well, let's uh, CD somewhere. Let's CD to temp. Let's CD to dev. Let's cd to var, and then let's cd to lib inside var, and then let's go back to our home directory. Now we can run s. This is a command given to us by the plugin. And what do we see? We see a stack. This is all the last directories that we were cd'd into. Um, it'll store up to 15 by default, I think. And we can see, okay, what if I wanted to jump back? I can run the b command, and now I'm in var lib. And we can verify that by running s. We moved back one in the stack. I can run b B, so I've done it twice now, so where am I gonna be? That's right, I'm gonna be in dev. We can verify that by running S. I can run S1. Uh, and then where's that gonna put me? It's gonna put me in spot number one because I gave it an explicit number there. So every time I run CD, it keeps track of where I go and I have the S command to look at my stack and the B command to run backwards. That's just an example of one plugin. If you go to the Bix repo, I have a list of other plugins I've written. There's a ton that I use on my normal system. I think I have like six or seven plugins. It's because my bash RC was getting huge and I hated it. So I just put everything into its own repo with its own documentation because I'm a little crazy like that. So there you go. That's Bix and bash.